Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. My name is Zara and if this is your first time here, welcome. If you have been watching my videos, thank you. Today, in this video, we will be talking about healing terminology and attributes. I would like to warn you guys, I am very hot. It is a very hot day. Things might not sound right. Things might not be right. I apologize in advance. In all of this terminology, I am going to be trying to explain things in alphabetical order. We will be explaining stones, things that you see in stones, uh, the way that light bends inside of stones. This is going to be a very, very long video and very informative. Anyways, let's get into the video. The first one that we will be going over is amorphous. Amorphous is a stone without a crystalline structure like amber, coral, opal. <laughs> These stones are not strictly crystals, but they are used by crystal healers for their properties. The next terminology we'll be explaining is an asterism, and hopefully I said that right. An asterism is a star-like inclusion. They are kind of like the shininess you see in tiger's eye, but star-shaped. Um, this can be in a crystal or a gemstone. It can be seen as a twinkle or a star in your gem. Obviously, this is not a star, but it's just kind of an example because unfortunately I don't have a stone like that. The next terminology we'll be going over is bicolor, sounding how it is. Bicolor is a stone that has two colors in one stone, like watermelon tourmaline. Colors developed always depend on the minerals that were available at the time of the crystal or gemstone. I'm, I'm already feeling like this is long. <laughs> the next terminology to be going over is brilliance. This is a refraction or a reflection of light as it passes through a stone. It is seen most in translucent stones and can be referred to as the brightness of a crystal. The next terminology we will be going over is cathedral. This is typically a hollow cross section where a crystal grows towards the center. These can be small and abrasive or large and stunning. Just to give you guys a bit more insight of what that was even about is like, just say like this was full of crystals in the inside. Like this is not crystal, this is mineral buildup. Um, like yeah, it's shiny like crystals, but like actual like crystal crystals from this going towards the center. That is pretty much what that is trying to explain. The next terminology and attribute we will be going over is cleavage. This reverses the tendency of a crystal to break, split, or cleave along the crystal formation planes. This term is used for cutting gemstones. So like, this stone is obviously cut. I do not believe that this stone formed in this formation. I mean, it could have, but the edges are very sharp. But there are, I don't know how well you can see them, but there's little ridges and stuff on there. Now, if those ridges were like through the stone, that's what a cleavage would be. The next terminology is crystals. Crystals contain atoms in an organized matter. This forms the crystal's lattice. I hope you guys remember what lattice means. Crystals will always grow in the same nature of their environment's lattice. This is called the crystal's habit. All amethyst is the same structured shape, even if their colors are different. Meaning, this is amethyst. This is also amethyst. You can tell both of these are amethyst by their vibrant purple colors. Crazy what minerals can do. The next terminology or attribute would be called crystalline. This means anything that has the structure or form of a crystal or made from a crystal or, for example, a crystal ball. Even a crystal ball can be a crystalline. But, like, I don't think that these are naturally this small. They could be. I'm not sure. But these are, these are little crystallines. Even, even this guy is a crystalline. Got lots of crystallines. <laughs> The next terminology or attribute would be crystallography. This is the scientific study of crystals and their information. Pretty basic. 
The next terminology or attribute is dispersion. This describes the way a light is split up, displays into colors of spectrum, and reflects through a crystal. So let's say that I took a light and I shined it through a crystal. Depending on what colors that the crystal shines on the walls, that is the crystal's dispersion. The next terminology or attribute would be a faucet. This is the flat side or face of a crystal. They are normally parallel on either side, as you can see, of the crystal. The faucet is normally what you see in a typical look of a crystal, and only crystals obtain this structure because it was a faucet. As you can see, as this was being made in a cave, it was fauceting this way. This terminology or attribute I think people are really going to enjoy just because a lot of people are like, what really is a gemstone? So a gemstone is one of many crystals and amorphoses. This is typically used in jewelry like diamonds, rubies, sapphire. Gemstones are valuable for their beauty and rarity. Gemstones are normally broken down into pieces and semi-precious stones. That is what a gemstone is, those nice pretty shiny rocks that you see in jewelry. Got you a gemstone. <laughs> the next terminology or attribute that we have is a geode. We are very familiar with these. This is a naturally formed cavity in a rock. Geodes were once volcanic bubbles that slowly, over time, formed into rocks. They are often lined with crystals that form towards the center, and they can be as small as golf balls or as big as a full-grown man. I think geodes are pretty cool. The next terminology or attribute is an inclusion. This is when a microscopic piece of dust gets enclosed in a crystal while it is forming, so it will almost create like little air bubbles around that piece of, of dust, and there will be like a bubble inside of your crystal, and that naturally happened while it was forming because it was trying to avoid that specific mineral. The next terminology or attribute is iridescence. This is the play of color display and its effect. This comes from interference of light and thin films in the crystal that will make your crystal very attractive. So I know you guys have probably seen my cell night. So in the cell night, as you can see, there are very thin films. And in some stones within these thin films, there will be a kind of like a layer over them of the actual rock and it will be very clear and very see-through. But underneath of it, it will have like almost like a rainbow shift to it. And that is iridescence inside of your crystal. Now we are going to go over lattice. Now, I believe I have explained to you guys what lattice is before, but if you are new and you haven't heard it, I will feel more than welcome to explain it to you in a larger sense. So lattice is, a crystal's lattice is the atomic structure described as three dimensions within the crystal. There are several distinct lattices for a crystal. Triclinic, monoclinic, orthohombic, trigonal, tetragonal, hexagonal, and isometric or cubic. The next terminology or attribute that I will be going over is lustre or luster. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. It is spelled L-U-S-T-R-E. Um, I would like to just let you guys know, like, no, I am not a crystal professional. I am currently going through school for crystallism, but these are the things that I do know. Now, getting into lustre, that is what I like to call it. This describes the way a light is reflected off the crystal surface face or plane. This adds attractiveness to the crystal and is often pearl-like, so like that tiger's eye that I was showing you. This has like a very pearl-like finish to it. As you can see, it moves within the light and that is that, that lustre or pearl-like finish that they are talking about. The next word or terminology or attribute that we are going to go over is magnetism. Now, I think crystals like these are very cool and any crystal can obtain this property. It happens because of iron. Magnetism is because of what I said, it gets filled of iron and then they kind of start to get this magnetic effect to them and they become very drawn to each other and very, very powerful and they they kind of attract what you need. <laughs> the next terminology or attribute that we will be going over is organic. Now, organic is things like amber. Amber is 
not an actual stone. It is fossil tree sap found from ancient trees. Um, or opal. Opal is not an actual stone either, but they are organic stones because they come from an organic place. The next terminology attribute that we are going to be going over is opaque. This means that light cannot pass through this crystal at all. Some crystals, they can be mixed with clear and opaque, and sometimes this will create swirls in your crystals, and some opaque stones will also appear cloudy or have swirls in them themselves. The swirls are from the minerals building up and just swirling as they build. So just for an example, this is a translucent stone. You can see pretty much through it besides the yellow inside of it. This is a semi-opaque stone or a semi-translucent stone. This is also known as smoky quartz. And as you can tell, like, yes, you can still see through it, but you cannot see all the way through it. And this is opaque. This is as opaque as opaque gets. I'm sure a lot of females will understand this just because opaque is used a lot in the beauty world. But if you don't know what opaque means, there you go. The next terminology attribute we will be going over, and unfortunately I do not have a piece and I really need to obtain a piece, but it is pyrite. This is typically a yellow shiny looking stone and often in perfect cubes or straight strips. This is typically called fool's gold because it is often confused with actual gold. The next terminology or attribute we will be going over is refraction. This describes a way a light bends as it passes through a crystal and the crystal reflects a mainly green or red. This can be used to determine one crystal from another. So this goes back to when I was telling you guys that if you shine a light through your stones, depending on what light your stone shines onto the wall, that is what you're going to see. I just told you guys, it helps you decipher which stone is which and which ones are good for what and what ones are good, what ones are bad, what ones need to be cleansed, what ones don't, what type of energy are they able to shine out through them. The next word or terminology we are going to go over is rutilated and hopefully I pronounced that right. These crystals have thin needle-like threads or streaks that are usually red from minute traces of iron inside the crystal. This can be found in any crystal, but is most prominent in clear quartz or light amethyst. You could find it in any crystal, you could see it in this, but you probably won't see it unless like you're holding it up to the light and you're like, whoa, there's hash marks in there. The next terminology or attribute that we are going to be going over is species. This is a way to group a family of crystals like the quartz family. This obtains amethyst, citron, and all of the quartz, like smoky quartz, rose quartz, you, you get it. Or the corundum family, this obtains rubies and sapphires or gemstones. The next terminology or attribute that we are going to be going over is terminated or double terminated. It means that your crystal comes to a point on both ends, also known as twinning or single terminated. It refers to a point on one of your ends. Twinning refers to a crystal growing in one direction and then for some reason breaking off and creating a crystal structure on both ends. Nobody really knows why it ends up happening, just sometimes your stone's piece gets disturbed. The next attribute or terminology that we are going to be going over is transparent and this is the last one guys. Transparent, this refers to a crystal being so clear that you can easily see through it. I don't know, this is pretty cool. So like I said guys, that is all I have for you today. I hope that you guys are learning wonderful and amazing things about crystals and figuring out your crystal journey. Unfortunately, this video did get out a little bit later than was expected, but unfortunately life does kind of end up happening. I'm so glad and happy to see that people are checking out my videos and they're learning about crystals. Unfortunately, this video was kind of long and I'm very sorry for that, but if you did like it, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment if you think that I left anything out or maybe if I'm misinformed, you know, I could never know. But you know, you guys can teach me just as much as I can teach you. But like I said, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye bye